We were designed to seek out sweet taste. The I mean, dopamine. what, 60% of our taste buds are sweet receptors. Yeah. And people often confuse, you know that feeling when you get when you eat something sweet, sort of rush? It can be confused for energy. You yeah. might think that's energy. It's not energy, it's dopamine, right? It's the pleasure molecule. And that's also quite difficult to understand. When you eat sweet foods in the morning, you're not getting energy. You're getting dopamine, but your mitochondria are suffering within. All right. Now, another thing that you talk about, which is very important, is when we eat sugar or gl even glucose or even protein, we squirt out a hormone called insulin. Yeah. Let's talk about insulin and let's talk about insulin resistance. Why is that kind of the one-two punch of mm. this? Well, first of all, insulin tends to get a bad rep but it's actually vital, right? People who are, don't have the ability to produce it, if they don't inject it, they will die. So when your body experiences a glucose spike, there are a few processes that take place that are not very good for you. So mitochondrial damage, glycation, inflammation, etc. So your body knows that if there's a big glucose spike happening, it should try to get that glucose level down. And so what it does is that your brain calls your pancreas and is like, yo, we got a big glucose spike. Can you grab this extra glucose and store it away? And so your pancreas sends out insulin fantastic hormone and insulin grabs extra glucose and stores it away in your liver and your muscles and your fat cells okay and that's fantastic because it gets that glucose level down now the problem is that over time as your body produces more and more insulin to deal with more and more glucose spikes you become resistant to it it's a little bit like the first time you drink a cup of coffee in your life, you are awake for 48 hours. That stuff is strong. You're like, whoa. And then three months later, all of a sudden, you're drinking 10 coffees a day just to stay awake because you've become habituated to it. Your body has become resistant to the caffeine. In the same way, you can become resistant to the insulin, right? And that's a problem because when insulin levels rise too much and you're too insulin resistant, it can no longer do its job of grabbing the extra glucose and storing it away. So then your glucose levels start to rise dangerously and that's what's called type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes but actually it's it's a spectrum right it's insulin resistance spectrum from normal metabolically healthy to all the way to type 2 diabetes and that's really something we want to try to reverse insulin resistance all right so what are the hacks okay to do that in my second book in the method here i focus on four most important ones so the first one is a savory breakfast we've covered it the second one might sound a little bit strange it's vinegar so a tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water before one of your meals a day. Do you know what molecule is in vinegar that has this effect on glucose levels or no? Well, I'm a big fan of vinegars <laughs> and I love acetic acid. Exactly. And so acetic acid slows down the breakdown of starches in your stomach. And as a result, when you have this vinegar drink before a meal, it can cut the glucose spike of the meal by up to 30%. So week two of the method, I introduce vinegar into your days once a week, uh, once a day, sorry. Week three, the hack is called the veggie starter hack. That means once a day before a meal, begin the meal with a plate of vegetables. Why? Because vegetables contain fiber. And when we have fiber at the beginning of a meal, it's gonna slow down gastric emptying. And so just slow down the speed at which any glucose molecules will arrive into your bloodstream. And then final hack of the glucose goddess method is after one of your meals a day, use your muscles for 10 minutes. So you know how I explained that your muscles are a place where insulin stores extra glucose? Well, your muscles, as they contract, they need energy, and the first place they look is in your bloodstream. They look for glucose molecules. And so we can use this to our advantage. If you go for a 10-minute walk, if you dance in your living room, if you even do just some simple calf raises, whatever movement and muscle contraction you can do is gonna soak up some of the excess glucose from your meal. So savory breakfast, vinegar, veggie starter movement and after four weeks of that you're already on a much better glucose situation you may not know this but i'm actually the inventor of the fake coke where the youtube phenomenon where you put some balsamic vinegar yeah. in san pellegrino water yeah. and i invented that in wow. my first book no way yeah. that's amazing yeah. wow the, the fake coke is very is cool. mine. also as i write about in the new book gut check uh, acetic acid is one of the short chain fatty acids that's actually essential for our gut bacteria to manufacture butyrate which is the holy grail of short chain fatty yeah. acids the other thing that I've written about way in the past is, particularly in Europe, 
people take a walk after a meal. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And there was a really cool study long ago yeah. asking people to either take a 10-minute walk before the meal or a 10-minute walk after the meal, mm -hmm. kept the calories the same. Yeah. The people who walked before the meal actually gained weight, and the people who walked after the meal lost yeah. weight. Exactly what you're saying. I love that study. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's, you know, the, the walking after eating, yes, it's a cultural habit, but actually look at the other hacks. They're also... You know, habits. For example, vinegar, it's in every single kitchen in the world. Yep, it's exactly. around. We know that it's a health ingredient. Veggie starters, I mean, antipasti, crudité in France. In the Middle East, they eat herbs by the bunch at the beginning of a meal. The salad with the vinaigrettes, you know, to, to start a dinner is so common in Europe. Yeah. This is not groundbreaking stuff. It's just showing scientifically why our habits are so good for our health. Yeah. In fact, Fidgeting is oh, yeah? really good for you. Uh, and fidgeters <laughs> actually are, in general, much thinner than non-fidgeters. Really? Yeah. And there's a really cool study, which you'll like, is it turns out our calf muscles are really good at absorbing blood sugar. Yeah, and the glucose. soleus muscle. Yeah, 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 the soleus. And there is a really cool uh -huh. study. It's Andrew at, Huberman who started yeah, talking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so if you do these calf raises after yeah, so, a meal. Uh, yeah, we're going to do calf raises <laughs> the, the rest For of the time. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, who would have guessed? But right, it, scientifically, mm -hmm. this is a really useful Isn't muscle. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, well, it's the muscle we use when we're walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's very cool. So right. if you're at your office and you, you can't go for a walk or a dance, somewhere and you're in a meeting just just do some calf raises under your desk nobody will be able to tell and you'll be reducing your glucose spike wow, secret okay. magic so if you guys you know on the next podcast see me doing this i'm not being impatient <laughs> with my guests uh, or i don't have to go to the bathroom uh yeah we're, i'm just getting you know, my glucose and up. another thing on the <laughs> fidgeting i recently learned that if you're scared on a, on a plane and there's a lot of turbulence if you sort of dance on your feet like this mm -hmm. as the plane is moving it becomes less scary and you feel the turbulence less so there you go what great hacks 